Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to my machine shop. Today we're going to start a new project, building a single cylinder, four stroke, overhead cam model engine. It's designed for ease of machinability, suitable for the first time engine builder, as well as the more experienced machinist looking to have some fun. I call it the Lynx, L-Y-N-X, like the Bobcat. And there's two versions of this engine. There's a metric version, the 15cc engine, where all the plans are in metric. And then there's the imperial version, the Lynx 90, which is a 0.9 cubic inch engine. And all of the plans for that are in imperial. I've tried to eliminate most of the complex components in a model engine. For example, um, there are no gears that need to be made. In this engine, we're going to be using a timing belt um, and some off-the-shelf pulleys to uh, turn our camshaft driven by the crankshaft. We try to keep the shape simple. The crankcase is a simple block with a few corners machined off. The front is uh, machined on the lathe, as is the cylinder. And we make the camshaft and crankshaft out of built-up construction, which minimizes the lathe work and makes them easier to build. The plans for this engine are available to my patrons on my Patreon page. I put the link below. Or I'll sell them to you for 30 bucks if I can figure out how to set up PayPal on my website, gregsmachineshop.com. All right, let's take a quick tour of the engine and then let's just jump right in and start building this crankcase. All right, let's go. This is an image of the completed engine. This is the Lynx 90. It shows the propeller hub nut, the idler arm for our timing belt, the carburetor in the exhaust pipe, and the cam box at the top of the cylinder head. This cutaway gives us a view of the internal components. The light blue crankshaft at the bottom, the magenta camshaft at the top. We can see the piston in the cylinder sleeve and the valves in the cylinder head. Here we can see the first assembly we're striving to complete, the crankcase assembly. The crankcase proper, labeled number one, is what we'll be machining today in this video. Next video, we'll turn our attention to number two, the front crankcase. Okay, let's gather the parts we need and get started on our crankcase. Here I've got the blocks of aluminum, the aluminum rounds, the slug of 1144 steel for our cylinder sleeve, some bearings, and some hardware. All right, let's grab that square block of aluminum and get to machining. And this is what we hope our crankcase looks like when we're finished. Okay, let's load up that block of aluminum into the lathe. I roughly center it using the four jaw chuck. Face the end and then use progressively larger drill bits to remove as much material as I can efficiently before having to turn to the boring bar. We're working on the large bore for the crankshaft first. By establishing a facing operation and this large boring operation, our crankshaft bore is perfectly perpendicular to this faced surface. Now we move to the mill and take that faced surface and mount it down on our parallel blocks. We need to ensure that it's perfectly flat against both of the parallel blocks so our bore is perfectly aligned and parallel to the z-axis of our mill. This is how we will ensure all six sides are parallel and perpendicular to the axis of that crankshaft bore and the bore is centered perfectly in our crankcase. We fly cut the top and that gives us two surfaces parallel to each other and perpendicular to our bore. Then we run an end mill around the outside of the part and that gives us the four remaining sides and makes them parallel and perpendicular as well. I'll put a link in the description below to how I square up a block to an existing bore. Next up is the bore for the cylinder sleeve. So we reorient the workpiece in the mill and use progressively larger drills so we can use our boring head. I use the circle function on my mill's DRO to locate the six holes that will be threaded to accept the hold down screws for the cylinder. The boring head is a really cool tool. I'm not going to go into its detailed use here, but I'm going to include a link to a video below on how to use the boring head. The 
we drill and tap the four holes on each side for the crankcase brackets. Then we mount the crankcase in the mill using a square of some sort so we can machine the chamfers. And that brings the crankcase to this point with the two 45 chamfers completed at the bottom. And the only thing remaining are the two chamfers on the, on the top corners, which are not a standard angle. So I will use die kim and scribe a few lines that will allow me to line it up in the mill to take off that corner. I use a flat end mill to put in the top chamfer and then a 45 degree engraving bit to inscribe Lynx 15 into that top surface. Yeah, that looks nice. I'll fill those letters in with some Sharpie. We can mount a flywheel, but I think I'm going to mount a propeller. This looks like an airplane engine to me. Well, building our crankcase, that was a great start for our Lynx 15 engine. Before I sign off, I wanted to mention a couple of things that I would do differently, having built the complete crankcase assembly. I would have only drilled one hole for the front crankcase in the main crankcase. I would have then mount, waited until I made the front crankcase with all of its eight holes, screwed it in with the single hole that I machined here, and then matched drilled the rest of them. Make that a little bit simpler. I'd do the same thing with the back. When I, mach when I machined the crankcase itself, I would have only drilled two holes into the crankcase and then after I made the rear plate match drill the rest of the holes. The second thing I would probably do is I would make these side brackets before I made the crankcase body itself and then screw them onto the side and then machine this flat on the crankcase itself and the bracket all in one machining operation. I made these later and had to come back and mount them and machine this flat. And getting these two to match was a little bit tricky without removing any material on the existing flat. I'd also like to give a shout out to the late Malcolm Stride, who was the inspiration for this engine. He uh, lived in the UK and built an engine very similar to this one with a belt driving an overhead cam. And seeing that engine of his is what gave me the inspiration for my Lynx 15 and Lynx 90. All right, well next time, let's work on this front crankcase part here. That'll be machined primarily on the lathe with a little bit of millwork putting in these holes and this slot. All right, until next time, I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my machine shop. Take care.